Welcome to the BBC Global News Podcast. I'm your host, Megan Money, with a selection of highlights from around BBC World Service. Up first, after liberating ISIS capital of Raqqa, the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic forces have advanced south towards the area surrounding the town of Deir Azor. Our reporter on the scene, Owen Chowder, filed this report. I'm here in the city of Raqqa where a deathly silence has fallen across the destroyed streets over the last few hours as the final patch of ISIS resistance was defeated. Most of the buildings here lie in ruins as the result of airstrikes and artillery over the months-long campaign. Nevertheless, there is an air of joy and relief among those in the city. The yellow flag of the SDF flies over every building still standing, and hundreds of militia members are dancing in the streets. The story is much different just north of here in the refugee camps. There, the city residents lack food, clean water, and medical supplies. I spoke to a man there who told me that while he is overjoyed that ISIS is gone, he does not have much hope that the terrorist group will be gone for long. The belief was widespread among those who have lived on the turbulent front lines of the war for years. Owen Chowder then moved south and joined an SDF unit on the front lines of Deir Ezzur province. I'm taking cover here behind an oil well right now. The SDF is fighting to take this, the largest oil field left under ISIS control back from the terror group. The fighters surrounding me are firing towards an earthen burn where a few members of the terror group appear to be positioned. But it is difficult to see as the terrorists have lit massive oil, f- oil fires, filling the air with smoke in hopes of concealing themselves. Nonetheless, the pounding explosions of American, British, and French warplanes are non-stop. The commander of the unit I'm with is a 25-year-old woman, not uncommon in the fiercely feminist SDF, who has promised me that this fighting is minor compared to the fighting in Raqqa, and the oil field will very soon be controlled. Owen Chowder with a riveting report from Syria. Now we go to our Middle East editor, Alex Klutz, for an analysis of the fight against ISIS. So where does the fight stand now? Well, as of right now, the group is losing territory on almost all of their fronts. In Iraq, they have been removed from all of the strongholds in the north and central areas of the country and are steadily being rolled back along the Euphrates River. In Syria, they have been pushed out of Raqqa by the SDF and are losing ground along the northern end of the river, while on the southern bank, Russian-backed Syrian regime troops have surrounded the ISIS-held city of Deir ez-Zor and are pushing east towards Iraq. Still, ISIS has had some recent success attacking towns in central Syria behind government lines. So do you foresee the total defeat of ISIS in the future? Yes and no. ISIS has had many severe setbacks and is no longer in a strategic or financial situation to have a resurgence in territorial control. However, the land they have left is in the Euphrates River Valley, which historically has been used as a successful staging zone for insurgency during the Iraq War. So while ISIS will be defeated as a quasi-state, we can expect them to stick around as a low-level insurgency. Will their defeat as a state result in the decrease of terror attacks in the West? Not initially. Our intelligence community believes that as it is defeated in Iraq and Syria, the group will focus on attacks in Western nations to try to sort of make up for their loss. That said, in the long term, the lack of a base to organize, plan, train, recruit, and fund means that in the future the attacks will drop off from what we've seen in recent years. Thank you, Alex. That's all from us for now. Be sure to tune back in tomorrow for the next edition of BBC Global News Podcast. Thanks for listening.